is out the back it is frosty and a little more fog this morning did catch a beautiful glimpse out the front window this morning of a gorgeous sunrise so that means uh, Facebook is going to be flooded with beautiful sunrise pictures this morning which hey that's way better than most of the things it's usually flooded with good morning Daisy what's up Toby good morning in Baker Montana I'm sure it's nice and frosty there morning Frank morning Michelle and Rylan what's up hopefully you're all healed up and feeling better after some uh, uh, tooth pulling fun uh, Miss Jill up in uh, Cedro Wally good morning to you sure love your daughter uh, got to hang out with her yesterday at church she's amazing what's up Ann uh, and we're doing Ezra 6 19 through 22 Ezra 6 19 through 22 um, and then we got Zach what's up morning sunshine we got Ron and Judy I think they're both on there good morning to the two of you or maybe it's just Ron um, Kayla good morning to you miss flower power in Vancouver what's up good morning um, we've got Rob good morning to you short stuff good morning Karen and Toby and Ron and Cheryl and Randy and Judy and Matt and Carol and Angie and Linda and Randy and Emma and Mr. Meester and Alice and Wendy all kinds of peeps so it uh, it's a good morning so we are going to be jumping in and finishing up Ezra chapter 6 today and uh, this is kind of a fun one because it uh, taps into something that um, just kind of caught my curiosity um, uh, anytime you're reading along and something sort of sticks out as odd or uncommon or or just a strange detail like why would that be included there those are like uh, stop here and inspect uh, indicators um, God doesn't waste his words um, and so if there's something that seems just unique or or just causes you to wonder why in the world would that detail be there just uh, hit the brake circle back and dig into that so um, that's what we're gonna do to morning with uh, this morning with a kind of an odd detail that uh, is included um, as we wrap up Ezra chapter 6 so let me pray and let's jump in what's up Misty good morning Minnie uh, dress warm it's gonna be a cold uh, walk out to the bus this morning so all right here we go let's pray man uh, Lord good morning thanks for an awesome awesome weekend and just blessed to have the ability and health and uh, um, everything to just get out and enjoy your creation to be um, filled up recharged with uh, amazing views and and adventures is awesome um, thanks for this morning to be able to reconnect and to dig into your word and to connect with friends that are like-minded and so Lord help us to just keep growing and learning as we study and read your word um, keep teaching us um, more about who you are what you care about what you're like and what you're capable of and so we just pray these things in Jesus name amen <clears throat> so here we go um, Ezra 6 picking back up in verse 19 uh, remember they've done the letters exchanged back and forth and they basically got full approval from the king of Persia to proceed with their project and not only proceed with the project but um, to receive support for it and so the people that had essentially uh, told on them and tried to uh, get them in trouble and come against them ended up having to pay the way and provide food for them provide safety security ensure that nobody would come against their project because the king ordered that they complete it so um, kind of what happened and we're getting to the spot where the temple is completed and they're getting ready to put their stamp of approval on it and so it picks up um, doo -doo -doo. here we go on uh, 19 uh, on April 21st the returned exiles celebrated Passover 
the priests and Levites had purified themselves and were ceremonially, uh, ceremonially, I could say that word, ceremonially clean. Uh, so they slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the returned exiles, for their fellow priests, and for themselves. The Passover meal was eaten by the people of Israel who had returned from exile and by others in the land who had turned from their immoral customs to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. Then they celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days, and there was great joy throughout the land because the Lord had caused the king of Assyria to be favorable to them, so that he helped them to rebuild the temple of God, uh, the God of Israel. So we'll just finish there for this one this morning. A um, couple things in here that are really cool. The part where it talks about um, this Passover meal. So this is their first Passover uh, festival uh, with the temple rebuilt. And so this is quite a, a big deal uh, for God's people. And it says that they uh, celebrated the festival or the Passover meal. And they did that with the people who had returned, who had come back uh, as uh, the people that had been exiled to Babylon, that they came back, the people that had been a part of all of this work to rebuild and, and kind of gr uh, grab a piece of um, Judah back and reestablish uh, God's people in, in Judah and Jerusalem. All of those people celebrated, but it also says that other people joined in in the celebration, the ones that had turned from their immoral customs to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. And so we're getting this glimpse um, of God's people uh, being open-armed to receive and invite in people from the other uh, cultures around them that were willing to repent and turn from their immoral and, and wicked ways and choose to worship God. And I think a lot of times that uh, we get this idea, particularly in the Old Testament, that God's people were very much like separatists, that they always stuck to themselves and were exclusive and never allowed any foreigners in um, and didn't, they weren't really evangelistic at all. And we get this picture of a very closed off um, people, kind of like the church that doesn't ever invite any visitors, right? And that's really not the case. Although... There's certainly some of that. Um, God has always intended for his people to represent him to a lost and hurting world. And so they, uh, they here we see this cool picture where they're inviting people in that uh, were not Jewish. Um, so um, we learned about that with uh, Ruth. All right. So and then the last thing I wanted to just highlight in here that I thought was interesting is in the very end of here, it talks about that there's great joy in the land because the Lord uh, had caused the king of Assyria to be favorable to them. And depending on the translation you read, some translations say that it uh, that he um, uh, caused them to be favorable. Another one, NIV, will say changed the attitude of the king. Um, and then probably the most accurate translation is uh, where it would say uh, that the Lord turned the heart of the king. And so I just think that's an interesting thing that, that we can imagine. Here we have someone who has so much power, so much authority, so much influence. And somehow God and his... Um, divine intervention and insight god changes the attitude changes the heart turns the heart of this person of this king for of his people in his kingdom and so it's like who would have ever thought that a king could come under the influence of an even greater king without this king knowing it Right, like he he didn't even know that that God was intervening, interceding on behalf of His people and working through this person, and so that's just pretty profound. I think I think there are so many times where it feels like our circumstances are way out of our control. That there's that we look at all of the things that we can see with our own mind, whether it's you know employment stuff, finance stuff, relationship stuff, kids stuff.
and it's easy to look at them and just see them as so concrete so unfixable so unchangeable and yet here we see God interceding and changing the attitude of a king that greatly changes the outcome for all of God's people at the time. And so that word in there, I shared it earlier in the Jesus Time Post this morning, but that word is uh, the word that uh, he uses for term is called savav, savav. And so I just kind of walked away from the my study time this morning thinking like, man, I know that God hears our prayers. I know that God um, asks us to be diligent in praying and to continue to pray and and, and just keep on knocking, right? Um, and imagine that we could have um, people's attitudes or hearts actually changed and turned. And so, um, so that was kind of my thing this morning as I just walked away thinking, man, I need to have that word on my heart today, Savav. And, and who am I praying for God to savav their attitude or savav their um, perspective or savav their um, outlook on uh, whether or not God's real or their, whether or not they uh, want to choose to follow him? And immediately people start popping into my mind. Like, like if I knew God really could intervene and change someone's attitude, who are the people that would hit my list? And so all of a sudden, um, it didn't take too long and I could start to think of people that I would love to have on that list for a variety of reasons. So that's kind of just my nugget this morning is uh, who's on your Savav list? Who do you, who would you want to turn their attitude, change their heart um, for the betterment of the kingdom? Uh, who would hit your list? Um, and why would they be there? And, and, and then to go for it, right? Um, to just go and and tackle that um, prayer, you know? Um, so that's what I got for this morning. That's my Monday morning nugget for you guys. Um, uh, let's see, jumping in here, looking at some comments real quick. Alice, how do you see the Jesus Time post? You just, just go to the Jesus Time Facebook page where this video is playing uh, when we're done and just scroll down. It'll be the post right before this video. Um, so uh, you can always see those there. Um, and then let's see who else jumped on here with this carol good morning um dustin good morning to you out in the big city of baker hope you're doing well miss ingrid good morning vickerman's good morning um cheryl good morning kathy good morning to you uh cheryl uh Poffinroff up north, good morning to you. Lori, good morning. Amy, good morning to you down in Texas. Hope you and your girls are doing well, your family's well. Um, Miss Linda, good morning to you. Scott out in Missouri, a good Monday. Uh, you're a little ahead of us this uh, morning. It's uh, mid morning for you, snack break. Uh, Miss Tiana up north in the frozen tundra. Good morning. Lainita, good morning. Robin, good morning. I think Bob's still here. Good morning, Bob. All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, the word, uh, Cheryl says spell it. Uh, the word is actually spelled C-A-B-A-B. C-A-B-A-B. -A -B. Uh, but the way you say it sounds more like saw, like cutting a saw. Saw vav. Um, and so uh, enjoy playing with that one and looking it up. I put the Blue Letter Bible concordance uh, there, and it's got the uh, Strong's number on it, so anybody wants to dig into that one can, can unpack it. There's nothing particularly special about the word. It's just a verb that means to turn or to change uh, or to turn about. It's just kind of unique in the way that it showed up in the text this morning. So, all right, that's the scoop. Let me pray for us and get us off and running on our Monday morning. All right, Lord, you are awesome, and we just thank you so much for your word. Thanks for... Um, God, just reminding us and modeling for us through history um, that we have this to look back at, that uh, we just get reminded that you're a God that can change people's attitudes. You're a God that can change hearts and minds. And Lord, uh, e even when people don't turn to you and they're not following you, that you can intercede and change their attitude for the betterment of your people and the betterment of the kingdom. And 
and uh, it just makes me think about Lord our leaders now uh, in our country particularly like our governor in Washington Lord just that um, um, just feeling compelled to pray and ask you to change his attitude that you would uh, change his mind and change his heart for the betterment of the kingdom and that uh, Lord you would just intercede whether he chooses to follow you or not that you would work through him um, to uh, do good things for your people in our state and so I just pray these things in Jesus name Amen all right. You guys are awesome. Have a fabulous Monday and start to your week. Stay warm and I'll see you back here tomorrow morning. We'll just keep jumping through Ezra, having some fun, learning and growing as we just uh, practice reading God's word, studying, thinking and uh, chewing and praying.